<laughs> and let's just skip over that. So straight to synopsis. Right, Scream 4 is uh, 10 years after the first one. Uh, Sydney has come back to her hometown with her new self-help book. A book signing on the 10th anniversary of Ghostface and her horrible tragic events. <laughs> and of course what happens? Ghostface shows up killing people. <laughs> uh, so it goes into the typical slasher just like the other screams. Somebody in a ghost mask runs around killing people, calling them on the phone, asking them horror movie questions. And mm -hmm. The pretty typical typical stuff. Um, Courtney Cox is back with Writer's Block. Um, she's the one that the other two are really kind of folk uh, there. The second one is a, about a movie based on the book she wrote. Yeah. And I never saw the third one, so I'm not sure what the third one is. You're not missing much. Nah, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> anyway, sometime during the third one, she and David Arquette hook up because they're married in this one. Mm -hmm. um, so Dewey the cop and uh, whatever Courtney Cox's character's name, Gail Gail Weathers, Weathers yeah, are <laughs> married, um, living in the Podunk town. So obviously their careers went nowhere. Um, and are we talking about the actors or the characters? Both. <laughs> it, it, it's a metaphor. <laughs> uh, we got the newcomers, uh, Rory Culkin and Emma Roberts. Um, they're the the high school teenagers. Um, as well as a couple other random. Well, Hayden Pen Penantier oh, yeah. is kind of a there we probably the most famous person in the movie. Yeah, right boy, you got the heroes cheerleader in there mm -hmm. with short lesbian hair. <laughs> no idea where that came from. Uh, but anyway, so you know, star studded ish. Um, but you got some newcomers to the series, and it's yeah. It's not, you know, it's good for being the fourth one in a series. Usually by the time you hit a fourth one in a horror series, it's pretty much, cr usually it's there's time travel involved or some crap like <laughs> they that. They make that joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it holds true to actually the original, I think. Uh, a lot of explanation of, you know, the horror movie stuff. They do a lot of stuff that the first one was all about. Mm -hmm, where The cliches. The, the, the cliches, and stuff. how to avoid them and stuff. And they're very self-explanatory throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, they got the two little, uh, Roy Culkin and his, whoever his no-name partner is. Um, teenage wife. Eric Knudsen, who was, who was uh, the star of uh, My Soul to Take back oh, last year. Really? Mm -hmm. Seriously? The, the kid with the, uh, the webcam on his head? Yeah. Wow, oh, well, that's <laughs> Craven. He's got himself a little boy toy. <laughs> um, so. These two are the, you know, they're the Matthew Lillard of the first one where they're always talk and the, God, what's a horrible, Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. The Jamie Kennedy who's <laughs> always explaining, they're the, the, the narrators, I guess, of yeah. what's going on as they're the horror movie experts. Horror movie yeah. experts as people are going down and they, but, um, so not much, uh, a lot of, a lot of stereotypes, a lot of hack and slash, but you know, it, it's too corny, I think. Um, the problem is it got to this point where, you know, the first one, legitimately scary. Yeah. Second one, are you kidding me? Third <laughs> one, really? Fourth <laughs> one, okay, I could be scared again. Um, yeah, it's been long it's enough been long enough, Yeah, that you could have written now nah, just a bunch of hokey. I mean, even my wife watched this, and she refuses to watch horror movies. <laughs> so this was, this was by far the least scary. I don't know. It was just... <laughs> It wasn't very good. Um, I definitely gave it a C, just, you know, yeah, okay, watch it, because you watched the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, definitely rent it if you, you know, if you like horror movies. It's got some good stuff to it, but for the most part, pretty much lame. <laughs> I would agree. Uh, in fact, I disliked it even more than you. I thought that, uh, I thought it was annoyingly self-aware. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's always been the thing of the series. And, and in the first one, it was actually kind of revolutionary and kind of interesting how we're making a horror movie about horror movies, or commenting on horror movies while making a horror yeah. movie. Like, that was interesting back in 96. And then not so much anymore. And they, they, they even try and make a joke about that. So it's, it's, it's like self-parody, self-parody of a self-parody <laughs> of a self-parody. And it's trying so hard to stay clever and stay sharp and witty and ahead of its audience that I'm just like, quit it and give me a movie. Like, I'm, I'm sick of this, like, snarky, ooh, yeah. look at me, look, I'm so clever, clever, clever. Yeah. Like, no, just stop. Stop right now. <laughs> um, and I, th I agree, it's, it's, it's not scary really at all. Yeah. I think um, at this point we could see this kind of horror on the CW. 
Yeah. Like it's it's barely R rated, I think, and it's. Uh, I mean, there's people get stabbed and whatever, yeah. but it's, it's it's horror movie violence. That's we're talking about the man who made Last House on the Left. Yeah, we're talking about the man who made The Hills Have Eyes uh, and Serpent in the Rainbow. Like he has zero edge anymore. His movies are just like these squishy, fluffy things. They're just like he's. Wes Craven just does not seem to either be interested in what he's doing anymore, he seems bored, or uh, he's just really out of touch and just yeah. doesn't know what's scary anymore. Um, and anyway, so I just did not really care for this movie at all. I thought it spent way too much time on the adult characters whom we already know, yeah. not developing its new characters yeah. at all. Uh, so in the end, when the, revel the killer's revelation is revealed, you're like, okay, I don't care about either of these characters at all. I don't care about really any of these characters yeah. except for the ones I already knew from the other movies. Um, in fact, the other, the, some of the characters that I enjoyed the most ended up getting killed, and I was like, oh, that's too bad, because yeah. they actually had something going on in this movie, <laughs> and not a lot of other people did. Uh, the movie spends a lot of time wasting time, I think, and I just found it to be boring and self-indulgent. So I give it a D. Fair enough.